My name is Namia Lohelen. I work with Enable Uganda in the TTE project, which is the Teacher Training Education Project. So the Teacher Training Education Project integrates and implements the human rights-based approach to development when carrying out its activities. So the objective of the Teacher Training Education Project is to produce competent teachers in the five national teachers colleges in Uganda. And this is to be achieved through strengthening the management competencies and implementation capacities in the national teachers colleges, as well as those of the department that governs the, in the national teachers colleges under the Ministry of Education and Sports. And then the other way of achieving this is to make sure that the NTCs have available appropriate teaching and learning environment and facilities. The other way is to make sure that the pedagogical approaches to pre- and in-service teacher training are effectively applied at the national teachers' colleges as well as in the partner secondary schools. All this being centered around sustainability and innovations. In addition to, the, to what I have mentioned, the project also focuses on three cross-cutting areas, and these are to create a conducive environment for teaching and learning. These are gender, digitalization, and climate. The meaningful participation principle is very important as we go about our work here in Enable Uganda. In the teacher training education project, it's implemented in various ways. For example, we design with the users. The users may be, some of the activities may involve the students in the national teachers colleges, others may involve the lecturers in the national teachers colleges, others may involve the non-teaching staff as well as the management in the national teachers colleges. Like I earlier on mentioned that one of the areas of focus is gender. So when we're coming up with when we're coming up with a video related to the gender based violence and it was for the gender based violence campaign, all the areas that had to be input in that video for the campaign were designed with the users. On the team we had uh, the staff for the teacher training education project. We had representatives uh, who were lecturers from the National Teachers Colleges, and we had students as well who were part of that team, as well as people from the Ministry of Education and uh, the Department of Gender. And through that, the brainstorming, the ideas that were created during the designing phase with all those people on that same team, uh, video related to gender-based violence. Under institution management, one of the activities done there is the results-based management. So before in the NTCs, planning, budgeting, and reporting of everything going on in the NTCs was basically done by principals and the accountant and other people were not really involved. But when we came up with the results-based management process, the planning, the budgeting, and the reporting, we had to make sure that everyone in the, NTC, in the national teachers' colleges is involved. That is from the principal, deputy principal, accountant, lecturers, non-teaching staff. So when we talk of the non-teaching staff, these are... The people here are the librarians, the ICT lab technicians, um, uh, the kitchen, the estates manager, the wardens, uh, the school nuns. So all those people had to be involved in this process because at the end of the day, those are the people that really implement these activities. Between four to five years down the road now, the National Teachers Colleges have fully embraced the results-based management process because it has brought out the good out of the NTCs in terms of management, 
in terms of teamwork, in terms of transparency, in terms of some people not feeling left out and they know that whether you are teaching staff and non-teaching staff, everyone is involved in the processes of the national teachers' colleges. Another activity that I can share with you is the development, construction and setting up of the early childhood development centers in the national teachers' colleges. So before, this used not to be there in the teachers' colleges. So you would find that students who are also mothers as well as other staff in the national teachers' colleges didn't have a space where they can leave their children, their babies, or go to check upon them. That means that if someone had to check on their baby, they had to go back home or wherever they had to go to make sure to go and check on their children. And the other thing is that students who are also mothers had to sleep out of the of the in of the national teachers colleges. But with the setting up of the early childhood development centers, it made things very easier for the mothers in the national teachers colleges, those who are students and those who are staff, because they would leave, they can now leave their children and their babies at the, develop, the, the early childhood development centers and then go and be able for students to, for mothers who are students are now able to go and concentrate in class fully without having to worry about the well-being of their children. And also those who are staff, who are lecturers and non-teaching staff are able to go by their work peacefully and happy because they know that their children are safe and are able to go within the breaks, are able to go and check on their children, and then in the evening, are, they are able to go and pick them up and take them home. So as I earlier on shared with you about the early childhood development centers, so thing, one of the things that happened before its development was the safe learning environment mapping, where identification of priority needs for construction and equipment had to be discussed. What were the needs of the national teachers' colleges in terms of construction? And this is something that involved um, representatives from the lecturers, representatives from the non-teaching staff, representatives from the Ministry of Education, as well as a neighbor who had to sit down together to come up with the priority needs of the National Teachers Colleges. And that's how the Early Childhood Development Centers came up as it was one of the priority needs for construction. Another area that we can see meaningful participation is under infrastructure. So when the constructions have been uh, decided on and are commenced, commencing in the National Teachers Colleges, teams are set up to be able to supervise and follow up on progress of um, the constructions going on in the National Teachers Colleges. And these committees and groups that are set up are actually, they actually comprise of um, staff in the National Teachers Colleges, they're the ones who work hand in hand together with the contractors, the people working on the constructions, to see that the right things are done and that everything is followed up properly. So you can see that the people doing all this are at the NTCs, and then the teacher training education project staff on occasionally go by to follow up as well and also have meetings to follow up on the progress. And through this, you can see that everyone is still involved. Another area where meaningful participation has been showcased is um, under the pedagogy component, where two online courses, that's the general teaching methods course and the technology enhanced learning courses have been developed. So in order to develop these two courses, priority needs had to be identified. That's in terms of materials, in terms of 
where the online courses are going to be hosted online and other different areas. So through all this, staff were involved, that is uh, lecturers, students, um, we have national experts who are also um, lecturers in Chambogo University, people from the Ministry of Education. So different people were brought onto the table to be able to brainstorm on all these ideas. So um, for the training materials actually that are in the courses, most of the training materials were actually designed by the lecturers of the National Teachers Colleges. This goes back to sustainability because at the end of the day, the National Teachers Colleges are going to be taking over all these online courses and these are courses that they're going to use to teach their students. So prior to that, continue community communities of practice were set up where lecturers in the NTCs were trained on different digital tools that helped them to be able to create the content that was put in these online courses. We are talking about trainings on how to create screencast videos, on how to create podcasts, on how to um, come up with uh, very good PowerPoints, presentations, and very many other contents. So as you can see through each and every step, Everyone was involved. People who are going to use these things were really involved each in every step of the way. The other area where we can see the meaningful participation still under pedagogy is through the TTE One Stop Portal. So as you know, during the, the lockdown and the COVID-19 pandemic where the schools were closed, we had to find a way how to continue with the learning that learning had to continue with the lecturer, with the, with the students and the lecturers. So that's how the One Stop Portal came about. And still through this, the NTC management, the, um, the lecturers, the students were involved in this entire process. So the One Stop Portal actually hosts, um, through using the Padlet, it hosts content of the lecturers by subject. It contains content about tutorials for the different tools that can be used, PowerPoint, WhatsApp, Google Classroom, screencasts, um, podcasts, all the tools that can be used to get to create all that content. The tutorials are all there on that one-stop portal. And to make it even better, we created a help desk team. A help desk team comprises of um, lecturers, representatives from each of the colleges who support their, their other lecturers in terms of reviewing the content that is to be put on the, on the one-stop portal in, to be able to send out reminders to their fellow staff, to be able to support their fellow staff on how to use the platform and how they can benefit from it, as well as the students. So these are different ways that we can see that meaningful participation has been realized in the teacher training project and enable in Uganda. So throughout this and through the other areas and activities that are implemented in the National Teachers Colleges, you can see that before anything is done, there is a lot of engagement from not only top management, but even the people who are to be able to benefit from anything that is done in the colleges, anything that is brought up in the National Teachers Colleges, the lecturers, the students, the national, the non-teaching staff, the National Teachers Colleges management, the departments representatives from the Ministry of Education and Sports, at each and every level, depending on which activity is being done, you can see that people are involved from the planning to the implementation to the to the reporting. And when it comes to the reporting, throughout everything that is done, the information is actually shared through different platforms. 
uh, steering committee, we have workshops, we have annual feedback surveys, we have fact sheets and results posters that are printed out and pinned in the National Teachers Colleges. Um, the workshops may involve students, may involve lecturers, everyone else may be online or face to face. This just shows the transparency and the engagement that everyone has in each and every activity done within the project and in the National Teachers Colleges. So what we have learned as we carry on our activities and as we look at the human rights based approach to development and the meaningful participation in particular, we see that what we have learned is that you have to involve the end users. As in the challenge in the past is that you would involve the top people and yet the end users, if they are not involved, then you get something different from what you really would have achieved if you involve the end users. And that's why, as I have already shared throughout uh, this session, you can see that the bottom top um, process has really been adopted as we carry on our activities. The other lesson learned is that involve everyone and that a comprehensive, comprehensive approach is needed in terms of infrastructure management and capacity development like all those things work hand in hand together and that focus should not be on only one area and in addition that if you if you involve everyone then whatever activity whatever initiative that is created will will earn acceptability by everyone but if you don't involve everyone from the beginning when everything has been uh, finalized you'll find that some people will not want to be part of that what you have created because they were not involved from the start and maybe even if they're involved they don't know how to go about it or to implement it so yeah it's also good to involve everyone from the start as you earn, as they will earn full acceptability of it. Thank you.